Lately, I've been falling asleep watching Poverty Row B movies. And that's how I came across this very odd little film, Strangers in the Night. With a runtime of just 55 minutes, it's a low budget but very entertaining mashup of Hitchcock films like Rebecca, Suspicion, and The Uninvited, Laura, and like every Val Luton movie produced up until 1944. So let me give you a quick plot summary with no real spoilers because it's worth the watch without me ruining it. Johnny is a wounded Marine, and during his recovery, he picks up a used copy of Houseman's The Shropshire Lad. Inside the leaf is the name and address of the book's previous owner, Rosemary Blake. Johnny and Rosemary strike up a correspondence and fall in love. Once stateside, Johnny heads to Rosemary's hometown of Monteflores, California. Monteflores, huh? Nice little town. On the train ride, he meets Dr. Leslie Ross, and she's also reading The Shropshire Lad, and they strike up a conversation. Most people feel that female doctors should be seen only in cages. Well, I don't. And then, just in case we were wondering if a woman doctor could handle an emergency, the train derails. <laughs> Once that's all cleared up, and it's never even mentioned again, we learn that Leslie is the new doctor in Monteflores, and Johnny makes his way up to meet Rosemary, who lives in this big, creepy clifftop house. Rosemary isn't at home, but her mother, Hilda, is, and so is Hilda's friend and companion, Ivy. Uh, Miss Miller told me that Rosemary isn't here. But it just couldn't be helped. She'll be back in a few days. She'll telephone. Now, Hilda is weird and obsessed with her own daughter, and when I say obsessed, I mean obsessed. Sometimes I can hardly believe that she's my daughter. No painter could capture the real Rosemary. How many times do I have to tell you that the flowers in Rosemary's room are to be changed every day? And poor Ivy, she knows Hilda has kind of gone off the rails, and she really does care about Hilda. But she's also afraid of her. So what follows is a crazy psychological thriller that actually had me asking out loud, what on earth is going on here and where the is Rosemary? When is Rosemary coming home? I haven't told you why I really came here. It's about Rosemary. Uh, Mrs. Blake, where is Rosemary? So let's not beat around the bush. This is by no means a great film. It's truly a B-movie with a B-movie budget and some B-movie performances. Although I must say that Hilda and Ivy are really earning their paychecks. Hilda just makes your skin crawl. She's creepy and unsettling. She's great. Can you smell the perfume? This perfume makes me feel almost as if she were here. Can you feel her presence here, Johnny? Virginia Gray plays Dr. Ross, and she's no nonsense in this role. And just like the audience, her spidey senses get activated the second she meets Hilda. She knows that this is one strange lady. However, the standout performance is from Edith Barrett as Ivy. She walks a very fine line between indulging Hilda and her off-the-wall behavior, but also knowing that things are getting a little out of hand and could spiral out of control. What you're planning to do is wicked and evil. So the male lead here is played by William Terry. He's all right, he's passable, I, I get it, it's wartime, a lot of actors are off in the service, he does okay. Well, I think what sparks interest in this film for most people is that it's one of director Anthony Mann's early efforts. Strangers in the Night was his fifth film. It's a little noir, it's a lot gothic, it's psychological, it's sometimes very intriguing and sometimes very silly. Mann would go on to direct such classics as T-Men, Border Incident, and one of my favorite Barbara Stanwyck films, the Western noir, The Furies. And while some of the elements of the story are highly predictable, I mean, we've got a house up on a cliff, and then there's this rickety fence, so we already know that's going to be a problem for somebody. And then there's some sleeping medication, which is mentioned multiple times, and we also know that's going to be a problem for somebody. And in the pantheon of movie portraits that include Rebecca, Laura, and The Lady on Fire, this one of Rosemary should really be right alongside them. Tears in the Night may not be a masterpiece of cinema, but it's a wonderful example of the kind of films that were being churned out on a shoestring budget during the 1940s. What it lacks in polish, it makes up for with great atmosphere and some memorable moments and characters. This very early directorial effort by Anthony Mann may be very rough around the edges, but it shows promise of the things to come. 
So if you're looking for a quick and entertaining watch that leans into the bizarre and unsettling, Strangers in the Night is certainly worth 55 minutes of your time. If you want to watch it, I've linked it in the description below. And if you do get around to checking it out, come back here and let me know what you think, because I would very much like to know your opinions. All right. There are 8 million stories in the Cinema Cities. This has been one.